where he uh, he did a he developed a theory of metadata of enrich, enriching and filtering metadata. He is currently a cataloging and metadata librarian at Solit University. He co-authored a book entitled An Emergent Theory of Digital Library Metadata Enriched and Filter in 2015, which was on the topics of metadata, digital libraries, open access, linked data, and Web 2.0. So with that, I will unmute myself. I will mute, unmute. I will mute myself, actually. Thank you very much. Um, good morning, everyone. So I work at uh, Solent University, uh, cataloging and metadata librarian. Um, uh, just today, uh, I, I know the the main team is bigness, um, and and I I uh, attended some of the uh, the presentations the last few days, and uh, uh, some of them were projects. Ours is just an ongoing day-to-day uh, -day work of cataloging and metadata instead of one specific time-bound project. So, um, so that um, the, I'm not presenting a project, I'm just presenting the whole work of the, the cataloging and metadata team. Uh, and it's, it's also, uh, it involves acquisitions, uh, it also involves um, uh, systems. Uh, uh, so it's, it's not just my work, it's, it's a teamwork. Uh, but to start with, I, I developed this idea of enriching, and enriching is not a new concept, it has always been there, and enriching is uh, along with the, the principle of linking, openness and filtering. Again, all these concepts have always been there, but when I interview uh, participants using a grounded theory method, these concepts just uh, uh, brought up as, as uh, kind of emerging uh, areas in libraries, archives. Um, um, and information management. So basically my talk will be about enriching, but it also touches on linking, it also on, on openness and filtering. So because I, I argued uh, in my past research, metadata that is enriched, linked, open and filtered um, uh, drives usage of resources and usage is an important, an important uh, aspect of uh, uh, any, any library. Uh, back in the in, in the 1930s, uh, most of you might know Paul Otlet uh, talks about this idea of um, links, uh, linking, and relationships because he's, he told the catalog only guides the reader as far as where the book is and it doesn't uh, provide what the contents are, the aboutness. So again, this new idea of enriching, this emerging idea of enriching. Um, also touched on the relationships and uh, some of the ideas which have been discussed in libraries for for um, for a number of years. Uh, so basically, the 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 impetus, uh, driving factor behind this is also users, uh, because uh, as you know, Ranganathan said, save the time of the reader, and on OCLC research put actually saving the time of the reader, which is to be forced to uh, force among the five uh, 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 principles developed by Ranganathan and save the time of the reader becomes more and more important and they brought it actually to the top, which, which uh, we, might, we might agree. Users are expecting 24-7 um, access, seamless access. You know, we have uh, several providers and then we users expect us to provide in a kind of convenient uh, seamless way in, in a triangulated uh, manner in, in a kind of single uh, interface. So it's all about the, uh, the user and again the user uh, aspect of the, uh, the cataloging and metadata work goes back to for example to Cutter in 1904 who argued you know the, the convenience of the user must, be, must come first. Again um, this uh, um, ideas were always there. Uh, this is our uh, kind of new, our new uh, Primo discovery uh, service. Uh, again, we we have we have all these features embedded behind the scenes, uh, but we present a, a very a, a kind of simple search. Um, if you want Google size, uh, like search interface, um, and the advanced search, I will come to uh, to that later on, is also there. Uh, but we will see also which which actually the resource actually used you know how how um, 
predominant is the, the simple search and the advanced search later on. Again, users can search actually using voice, but again, that, that's developed by the, the system provider, the discovery system provider, of course, but without the metadata, it doesn't work. So we, we, we tested that. And we, we did some user testing in the past, not just the, the um, voice recognition, but the other, the other aspects. And again, metadata plays such a crucial role in our day-to-day -day work here, here at Solent. And without metadata, we can't uh, have uh, a functioning uh, uh, information system or uh, library, library system. Um, this is actually a slide um, I asked my, uh, my manager, David Wright, who is the, the head of the, uh, the acquisitions and um, uh, uh, access, access library, but also he's, he's actually the, the, the second um, um, uh, uh, university librarian. Um, and uh, basically, uh, I asked him, would you just give me some ideas of metadata and money? How, how does it how does it trail it? And he, he sent me this slide, which says, oh, of course, return on investment in library resources is important. And we, we invest a lot of our resources on digital products. Digital means electronic resources. Then digital resources, uh, by, you know, by their very nature, require a lot of metadata because users don't have the opportunity to actually um, uh, browse around the shelves. And this is actually also impacted by COVID, as you know, then that means we need to have metadata. Metadata aids acquisition, metadata supports circulation, metadata supports interlibrary loan. So without metadata, we don't, we, we can't have our, we don't have resources being used by our users. Again, going back to the, uh, the idea of, you know, the principles of uh, cataloging and metadata, this was developed and over, over the years, like these four, four important principles by libraries. In my research, I looked at, 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 at this, um, you might find uh, Sovereign S2000 and uh, book, uh, Foundations of uh, Information Organization, very, very important one. Um, so this idea of simplicity, this idea of sufficiency and necessity, user convenience are always there, but again, uh, there are, uh, with, with digital technologies, with, with all of the variety of resources. We have um, some of the, the limitations of the standards-based standards approaches, uh, like growing library collections, technologies changing user expectations, as I mentioned. Uh, so standards have their own, own limitations. And, and what about the, this Paul uh, Othred's idea of the social space of documents, he says, that is, uh, you know, what users say about the books, uh, which would bring us to more uh, uh, about uh, metadata created by users, metadata created by catalogers. Are we the sole prerogatives of uh, cataloging? Are we the ones, are we the, the sole people who create uh, metadata or do we have others? So this is a recent actually uh, article by Amidos in 2019. This is about the Metadata uh, 2020 project. So they, they identified, actually there are several collaborators, there are several agents uh, or they call it the metadata cast curators, custodians, librarians, users, and, and machines, uh, all these are uh, a part of the metadata creators. Back to metadata, idea of metadata enriching. So we uh, move from that kind of sufficiency and necessity principle to a more metadata enriching, have as much metadata as possible. Um, uh, so the idea of including not only um, publisher metadata and the cataloger metadata, but also user, user metadata and, and how you, you link that and how you make uh, uh, openness because linking doesn't work without metadata openness and how you provide that in, in the discovery system. Uh, all these four principles again, uh, back to the, this idea of the, those four principles of uh, uh, convenience, standardization, uh, sufficiency and necessity. So. Um, um, so enriching for us is um, adding um, uh, an iterative, a cumulative uh, kind of um, uh, improvement, enhancing instead of just one big project. So, so it's, it's a day-to-day -day improvement. The cataloging uh, and metadata creation is a continuous improvement. Uh, so we make the book available, especially the electronic books. We make the portfolio available. 
and then we continuously enhance it. So that's the idea. We could do that uh, by automatic means, we could do that manually, we could do that in a combination of ways. Uh, uh, sometimes we get uh, this uh, uh, work done, for example, by a Library of Congress subject headings or the, the British Library uh, uh, open metadata. Uh, Library of Congress uh, also opens a, a lot of their, their metadata. So we, we use a lot of a lot of resources. I will come again to, to that a little later on. So when I came in 2014 as cataloging a metadata librarian at Solent, um, I was, I was we were cataloging this book, The Man Without FS. I'm not a politician or anything, and, uh, but I was reading the book, uh, just scanning through the book, I mean cataloging, and I found a lot of the contents talks about this, I, this guy called Alexander Letivenko. But uh, when I catalog, we catalog the book and then we tried to search it, it didn't come up because Ale we, I mean, search for Alexander Letivenko because the book talks a lot about the assassination of this, this, um, this person, but actually we couldn't find the book. I couldn't find the book. So I just did a test and then I added the Alexander Letivenko in the table of contents because it's, it's mentioned in the table of contents. And then since that time, we actually decided to make table of contents as part of this enriching uh, idea. And, and then I, we also made Letivenko a subject a heading, a personal subject heading, and then people who would search for, you know, students doing an essay or a dissertation about, let's say, um, political assassinations and, and searching for Alexander Letivenko, they would not be able to find this book unless we add this person somewhere in the catalog. It doesn't matter whether it's in the description or in the table of contents or in the subject headings, but users need to find it. So that's the convenience of the user. That is access, that's discovery. That is my idea of enriching. Just one thing at a time, a small thing at a time, incremental uh, progress uh, through, uh, and this is another example. This is a book about corporate manslaughter in, in the maritime and aviation industries. Again, without, without adding this uh, a, a small, um, you know, uh, a component of a small part of the book, which is uh, talks about Costa Concordia as an example of corporate manslaughter. Uh, this is an accident in Italy, a, a ship, uh, a shipwreck. And if you don't add this Costa Concordia, students looking for Costa Concordia would not be able to find this book, which might help them during their research. Then the idea is, do you want to make this as a subject? Do you want to make this as a part of table of contents? In this case, we just added the table of contents and it, it helped. You see again that, that idea of uh, enriching. Then we, we found out our subject headings had lots of limitations. Authorities have limitations because of inconsistency, because um, uh, subject headings, etc. Then we have a, a, a very good systems librarian. Uh, he helped us to, to import subject headings available freely elsewhere, like the Library of Congress. We imported about 15,000 subject headings and imported about uh, 65,000 authorities into our catalog. That was 2016-17. And then uh, we would update them every year. But then the systems, the, uh, the library management system has been upgraded with any improvement. Then the metadata sharing with the community was possible. Then we could have also actually link directly to Library of Congress subject headings now. So uh, for example, when, I, when we are cataloging, we could just press a key F3, function three, or search for uh, subject headings else outside, we could actually search that. But to do that, actually, you need to have a, you know, configure, uh, set up, again, the back end of the subject headings. We were able to do that with, with the systems library and help, the, system, uh, the systems uh, manager help and then we would be able to actually search up. So that side of openness now, you see. Uh, so we could be able to find actually uh, records, subject headings, authorities, which are available elsewhere. Um, again, uh, we, could, we could see uh, the idea of linking there as well with, uh, with a, a bit of, for example, um, a linked uh, kind of, uh, we, we haven't implemented any linked data, but you could see because of the system the library management system and, and a kind of instantiation of or um, um, uh, of the view of the linked link the linking aspect you could see some of these links go to actually external sources again that requires configuration and um, i always believe that 
Catalog and metadata and the library should be able to configure their metadata fields, for example, which, you know, um, which fields should be displayed in the simple search or in the advanced search, etc. along with the, the authorities. This is how, 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 how it was configured. So that means we would be able to, with that consistency, uh, we would be able to uh, implement RDA and we were able to implement fertilization. So we, 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 we um, implemented RDA again back 2014, 2015, and we also uh, implemented fertilization. Uh, um, so ferber because fertilization also requires good metadata, consistent metadata, um, matching title and author fields, etc. You could see uh, uh, there's a lot of manual intervention. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't be able to do this uh, all uh, uh, by by the machines. Why? Because even the Oxford comma brings some problems in fertilization because the two titles are different with a comma or any indentation for that matter. Um, uh, sometimes the, the various editions come with slight variations that creates a, a lot of problems with fertilization and then we we'll, we'll go al along and uh, check those, those uh, uh, subtitles, etc. And then we, we would use, for example, a 240 field to create um, a consistent title. Uh, so some of the issues being uh, variations in tight in subtitles, uh, in spelling. Even for example, if you if you if you uh, write globalization with small s and z, so that would that would not be able to that that wouldn't uh, verbalize. So um, uh, a lot of manual intervention again. Uh, old cataloging uh, had some own, its its own uh, problems. For example, with ACR two. Uh, some of the additional statements being put in, in the, with, along with the title, we also used uh, a lot of uh, uh, automatic bulk updates in that, in that regard. Uh, this is just one example of, uh, again, I know, I know uh, this, is, uh, this is more, uh, 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 you know, subject for discussion, subject for uh, arguments, but this is, this is, this is, an, uh, this is uh, actually a drama. Uh, never so good. Uh, it is it is a performance, but in that, in that performance are mentioned, uh, let's say um, um, a, a prime minister in this case, uh, Harold Macmillan and, and other people. So would we be able to uh, do um, subject headings about about this? So that's we, we bring that to discussion, and 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 that brought us to you know uh, again to subject. Uh, authorities, how do you how do you create subject authorities? How do you create uh, subject headings, etc. Uh, uh, just to give you an example of the challenge and and how you would be able to do this, uh, which prime minister is difficult to catalog, and, and I this is Harold Wilson one, uh, but you could see the uh, the next uh, slide that um, uh, some of the names, as you know, in authority headings. Uh, have matching names uh, elsewhere. So again, we did this a kind of, a kind of a small test with um, uh, uh, as a kind of showcase whether we would be able to enrich our catalog with uh, books which talk about prime ministers. For example, it might be a history of uh, uh, Br a British history, but they're, they're, they're in there, prime ministers were discussed or personality people were discussed. So do we need to make uh, subjects, uh, these people's subjects of this uh, catalog record. So again, this idea of enriching is just bit by bit, piece by piece, uh, continual uh, small uh, enhancement. I think in this case, actually, jo Boris Johnson is easier to catalog because he, he doesn't seem to have a matching name uh, and uh, Margaret Thatcher, but the others, as you can see, for example, Gordon Brown, John Major, they have, you know, uh, so in, we need to disambiguate using, for example, date of, date of birth, uh, uh, et cetera, and other details, et cetera. And if we create a collection of uh, doing va using various things, for example, if it is uh, women's uh, 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 week in March, in March, then we would create a collection for that, for that week. So this is just, a, a, we created a collection of the books about his prime ministers or books that discuss about uh, prime ministers. So we, again, uh, to showcase and, and test and see how we could we could be able to uh, uh, idea of uh, enriching. So for that book I mentioned about um, uh, never so good, we created 
uh, we added some of these personas like Winston Churchill and Harold Macmillan. So again, that would aid the user um, uh, to to be able to find to be able to find the book. Uh, um, of course, I, I mentioned that we implemented RBA. Um, that was um, um, uh, purely um, uh, uh, manual a manual job. We couldn't be able to just automatically uh, do. Uh, uh, RDA uh, by uh, by uh, you know by a bulk update, but uh, there were uh, normalization rules and things like that that would help us to 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 do some of some of some of the jobs. You could see ACR to record on on the left and RDA record on on the right, which is, which shows you a kind of enriching again. So for me, enriching is again uh, this um, uh, this. Uh, uh, small increments, small enhancements instead of one big, big uh, uh, bulk update. Uh, this is just, the, I, I know a lot of you are uh, catalogers or metadata people, so you, you would be able to know this already. So, but it's just um, how we, we use normalization rules and uh, how we use uh, uh, RDA and, and metadata linking. So that side of metadata, uh, openness talks about the community. Of course, we, we are using uh, a more probably enhanced library management system, which allows us to link to the community. So community means uh, people who uh, made their uh, cataloging data uh, available, which includes NBK. That is the, uh, the uh, on Monday, there was a presentation about the NBK, which is, which is a useful part of us now, because we are also involved within in NBK and we actually get to use NBK quite, quite a lot to, to find uh, records, matching records uh, from, from the community, uh, which, is, which, is, which is really great. So that, again, that brings to that, the idea of openness. If we make our um, uh, records, our bibliographic records open, then we would be able to uh, find a lot of information. For example, we'd also, it will also help us to find um, keywords. You can see keywords here on, on, on the right. And this is a number of libraries who, who own this book from, from the library, GISC library have discovered. So that's the NBK front end. Uh, so- Anna, sorry, just to uh, let you know, you have just about two minutes left before questions start. Okay. Uh, so again, uh, just in this, in this two minutes to, to wrap up. So this is the idea of enriching, uh, linking, uh, openness. I think what's left is filtering. Filtering is the ability to uh, provide users with um, uh, present to the user. They are using a lot of simple search. They are using single uh, a keyword, two keyword search actually, sorry. And, and we also did that kind of metadata usage in, in the back end and see how they use, uh, how our users use the metadata. So that's, that's the idea. Um, and how they use the, the facets, how they, they uh, uh, ask, how many times they click uh, on, on a certain aspects of the discovery system, we would be able to do that. And uh, in, in, in conclusion, I would say, uh, keep your metadata enriched, keep the interface simple, that's the discovery part, keep users happy and keep maximizing usage and impact. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Um, I hope uh, that, makes, that makes sense. I know it's um, a bit of a we will uh, uh, rush, but um, uh, you get the idea uh, that uh, we have been doing for the last few years how to enrich our our, our catalog. Thank you very much. Gitana, thank you very much for that that useful information. Um, I certainly think it's a challenge to figure out how to truly integrate Ferber and RTA into Mark Records, uh, just because of the nature of Mark itself. Uh, to me, they, it always seems like sort of a siloed kind of situation, but the what we're trying to do with making these relationships with Ferber and RDA is hopefully to make these relationships. So I, I think there's a lot of work around that, um, that we're trying to figure out how to do that exactly. So this was very helpful to hear. Um, so please, if you have questions for Gitana, go ahead and type them in the chat and I will uh, read them out as I get them. Uh, we do have a question already that uh, came in during the talk from Lynn. And her question uh, was enriching metadata in this way, such as in the Putin and the shipwreck examples that she used is hugely time consuming. In these days of shrinking cataloging departments, where should we start?
um, I, I totally, um, I totally understand, um, you know, uh, the, uh, the, the, this, uh, the idea of, you know, uh, the, the challenge, uh, currently facing, uh, faced by, um, by the, the, the kind of technical services we use to call them cataloging and metadata or metadata and discovery areas. But I think the, I, we, 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 are, we are fortunate that we, in, in my case, we are very fortunate that the, um, the university uh, library and li library manage, managers understand the, the, the crucial importance of metadata. That's why I asked them, just my, asked my manager to put a slide on metadata and money. How, how do, how, how are, what's our, our benefit? What's our impact there? So we make a case of uh, enriching in, in a kind of, uh, presentation for all library staff at some point and then to library managers as well. So the, the idea is to, uh, I know uh, we couldn't answer that kind of shrinking stuff in, in, one, in one go, but uh, catalogs are very important. Metadata is a very crucial part of the library. Without catalog, without the metadata, we wouldn't be able to do acquisitions, circulation, all the library work. But also uh, in that, if you have that challenge, then Openness would help. Openness means people who have opened their uh, their metadata, uh, like the NBK, the Library of Cong Congress, uh, the British Library. Then we would be able to link that um, uh, uh, would with, with, with you know get some of some of for example the authority headings. But there is a lot of manual intervention that needs to be uh, applied for cataloging and metadata. Work, if, if, that, if that makes sense. If I answer that correctly. Yeah, thanks. Uh, another question we have from Helen. What tool did you use to analyze search terms and metadata usage? Yeah, uh, again, we, 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 we have uh, Alma uh, and we have Alma Analytics. So Alma Analytics uh, also has a feature called uh, a kind of Alma Discovery Analytics. So it would give you, yeah, give you them a parameter uh, criteria, I kind of, uh, um, uh, uh, for example, say what are the most usage words and how many, how many times um, a user clicks on, on, on a, a specific aspect of um, uh, the discovery uh, interface, some of the, the, the memes, for example, the facets. So that is, in, in short, that's Alma Analytics. Okay, great. Uh, Katrina would like to know, uh, did you add the table of contents and the extra subject headings manually or by automated search processes? Manually. Okay. A, lot of, a lot of it manually, but we find them again. We, I would just go to, um, uh, we, we would go to the ebooks part of the table of contents, just copy the table of contents, put them in a kind of list, add uh, just a bit of HTML to list them uh, in, in a way and then put them in. Uh, and then we haven't done all for, we haven't done table of contents for the whole collection. Uh, for example, some of the bulk collection we buy from some of the suppliers. But for individual purposes, whether it's a print book or an ebook, that's the idea. The idea is have a table of contents. So that's, that's a kind of, uh, you know, cataloging and metadata policy. But if you don't find it, just leave it. If you find it, add as much as possible, as much table of contents as possible. Sometimes the table of contents is too big, then we would make a compromise just to put the chapter headings. Okay, so Anastasia would like to know, uh, I'm not sure if you saw the, the presentation by Victoria Morris from the British Library yesterday. Uh, she talked about using machine learning techniques uh, to sort of enrich metadata uh, in their records. And she's wondering if something like machine learning techniques such as this would help reduce the manual intervention that is needed for the names. Yeah, I think that's, that's absolutely, uh, I, 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 I saw the presentation, but I didn't have, unfortunately, I, I, I didn't attend the, the presentation, but um, in, in one of my slides, actually, I have, I have, um, um, I, 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 I have in, 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 uh, in the notes section saying, enriching could be done um, uh, manually or by machine, whether it's machine learning or just a bulk update using Mark Editor, you know, Open Refine, uh, other tools, but also it could be done by machine learning in, in uh, uh, a part of it. But, Always, uh, there is a manual intervention. Again, uh, the idea is 
whether you know we need to have a lot of metadata sitting behind, whether it comes from the user or whether it comes from the machine. So the, the metadata would sit behind the scenes, uh, and it, it doesn't matter whether you use machine learning or not. Machine learning would bring, of course, efficiency, and I'm I'm in favor of any any uh, technology intervention in that regard. Yeah, I agree. We only have so much time ourselves, right? <laughs> um, Jeannie says, thank you for your presentation. It was very informative. Uh, her question is uh, under Mar RDA and using Mark 21 and the 1XX and 7XX fields, have you thought of using subfield E, the relator term? Would it further enhance those fields and what are your thoughts on using these subfields? Sorry, there's, there's a bit of drilling outside. Uh, I, they promised to me they would, they would uh, stop for 30 minutes, but they started because it's uh, uh, more than 30 minutes. So, would you repeat the question, Diane? Sorry. Uh, using uh, in the 1XX and 7XX fields, have you thought of using subfield E, relator term? And would the relator term subfield E further enhance those fields, so the 1XX and the 7XX? And so, just what are your thoughts on using that subfield? Yeah, I think uh, uh, um, uh, at, at the moment we we, we use uh, we we don't use seven seven six as such, but we use the discovery system, which is which is primo. Um, uh, the discovery system uses the Dewey the Dewey decimal fields, the, the call number fields, to bring books together on the discovery front, on the filtering on the discovery front, instead of uh, using the seven seven six because um, we we haven't, but we would. Uh, I, I would be happy to explore uh, using the 776 related field as well in, in future. Thank you. Okay, um, and uh, I, my, my connection is cutting out just a bit, so I apologize. Um, I also would like to know uh, the, if the manual edition is done at the point of cataloging. And do you follow the mark rules for, to cite the table of contents? Uh, sorry, Dan, again, uh, I, I didn't hear that question uh, because, because of drilling our work outside. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, uh, it, Vasa would like to know if this manual edition is done at the point of cataloging and do you follow the mark rules to cite the table of contents? Um, uh, the the, uh, the table of contents uh, uh, we, we, for for print books yes we we do it at the at the time of cataloging for uh, for ebooks we we would we would make them available uh, but just bulk update they import all in batch and then uh, for individual ebooks work through our way uh, manually and uh, again we just use uh, uh, a 505 field uh, which is a mark uh, 545 field and, um, uh, and nothing else, to be honest. Okay. Uh, so I don't have any more questions coming in right now. Uh, if you have any last minute questions, we've only got about two minutes left. Um, so I think if there's anything else that you would like to, to speak with Kitana about, maybe you can meet with him in a breakout session later this morning. So at this point, I think we'll take our, a 10 minute break and we'll be back at 1040 with our next paper. So thanks very much, Gaetano, for a really great presentation. It's very useful. And uh, I will see you all in about 10 minutes. Thank you, Dan and everyone.